know, when I think about the process and how, how long it takes, or sometimes patients are like waiting in the hospital for it. You know, what goes into that is why does it take so long? Got it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm happy to talk about the process. The first um, sort of thing to know is that if, if any individual feels that another individual lacks capacity and needs someone to step in and manage things for them, then they can go down to the magistrate's office and file a motion for guardianship. And there's a fee for it. It's like, I don't know, hundred bucks, couple hundred bucks. Like it's not it's super bad, but it's also not nothing. And there's some people that it would be prohibitive for them to pay that amount. And you have to fill out a fairly complicated form and sign off and say, you know, I believe this person doesn't have capacity and here's why. And this is what's happened to them. And this is why they need someone else to step in and manage things for them. If you can't do it yourself, if you can't afford it, there's a couple other ways that you could potentially go about this. One would be to go through adult protective services. Because I would assume, I mean, if you're concerned about the person, there's probably need for an APS referral as well. Right. And so I often advise this as a place to start, because if APS comes in and they go, oh, my gosh, this is so clear cut, this person needs a guardian right away. They do this sort of thing a lot. They they know the judge's name, like they have their own designated judge and, and they can file it. They can petition for guardianship. And then if there's someone who's around and able and willing to be the guardian, then great. And if not, then OK, it'll be an APS social worker who will be assigned it. And if you do it that way, the county tends to pay for it. So here's the thing. Regardless of who actually submits the petition, what's going to happen then is that a, a court date will be set. You'll be assigned a date where you have to show up in this place and you'll be told to bring a bunch of evidence. And while you're gathering evidence, they have hired a guardian ad litem, a lawyer, to try to prove why this person does not need a guardian. And as you might imagine, some cases are clear cut and the lawyer looks at it and goes, I, I got nothing. They, they really need a guardian. I'm sorry, judge. And that might be a pretty quick and therefore inexpensive process. However, sometimes it can get really messy where there's also been family arguments and there's past trauma and there's mental health conditions. And maybe it's not lack of capacity. Maybe it's a medication non-compliance issue or a mental health challenge or interpersonal drama, you know. And so the guardian ad litem digs into all of this and they charge a lawyer's hourly rate while they do it. And who pays it? The estate of the person who may become uh, declared incompetent. Yeah, it's not the person who filed it. It's actually the estate of the person kind of defending themselves. Like they're the, their estate pays this lawyer. And if you can't afford it, sure, the state will step in and pay it for you. But they really do look and they really do make you pay for it if you possibly can. But you do have to have the guardian ad litem. It is mandated and it could take a long time. It could be quick. It could be really cheap, it could be really expensive, anything in between. Right. And so. Uh, the court date will come. You'll both present your sides and whoever's in charge will render the decision and they'll pronounce it publicly to everyone. But, you know, you got to keep in mind that at the end of this, assuming things do go the way that the person doesn't have competence, then the judge is going to say, you are incompetent. This is the person who is now assigned to your guardian. You may no longer make these decisions. They will make all of these for you. There's trauma there for most people. You know, even if they have dementia and forget it later on, it's still trauma in that moment. Mm -hmm. And some don't forget. And, so, you know, it can be irreparably damaging to the person who filed the petition in the relationship with that person. Uh, you know, some patients will never trust people again. And some, and it, you know, and I don't think it happens a lot, but it does happen where people abuse the system too. They may bring a charge just to waste the person's money as it goes through the ad litem process. And, you know, and some people will do it to retaliate for past things. And we like to think it doesn't happen, but it does. I don't think it's common. I don't think it's something we have to stress about, but it's something to be aware of. And the trauma that it could inflict and the financial costs that it could be. It can be thousands of dollars. It can be tens of thousands of dollars. You know, so it's not something we approach lightly.